welcome to Dragon Con Update. My name is Will, and I'm gonna be your host tonight. We've got a lot of great things to talk about here. We're going to be interviewing a couple guests. We've got some great segments to show you, and we're gonna get some good updates going on from around the convention right now. First, I wanna start by pointing out some art that has been donated by the art show. We have two pieces right here for you to see, but they've got a whole lot more down at the actual art show. We hope you go check it out. There are several numbered and signed dragon prints, like the one that's on your left here. This dragon print is by Don Mates, and it is available for the live auction. Now, he is the same artist who created the Captain Morgan on the Captain Morgan bottle. So if you get to see that uh, wonderful Captain Morgan bottle, take a look. It's the same artist. It's great. This on the right here is by Miles Wall, and it is named appropriately lion -O, and it depicts one of the characters from the Thundercats, one of the best characters in my opinion, but I know that that might be, you know, up for debate. It is made with ink, Copic, and pencil on toned paper. So it's really, it's a really cool piece. And you know, this of course is a, you know, just a small sample of all the amazing art that the art show has available for you. Now behind me, right here, which I'm blocking from there, but I'm not blocking from over there, this piece is fantastic. This is actually from a volunteer of the art show. This is from Laura Dubois, and she actually donated that to us, and it is a fantastic piece to show off. It's called Gardened Pond at Dusk, and you can find more work by her at Jelly Butter Studios. So this, these three pieces are just three of hundreds of pieces at the art show and we hope you take a moment go check it out and see all that the different artists have to offer now one of the parties going on tonight is going to be a little tricky I want to start by mentioning the Heroes and Villains Ball. It has changed locations. The Heroes and Villains Ball is now going to be at 10 p.m. on 200 Peachtree Whitehall. The entry to that room is through the seventh floor of the Westin. So definitely check where you're going tonight. If you're going to the Heroes and Villains Ball, you want to go to the Westin to get to it. It's gonna be really awesome. There's a ton of fantastic parties tonight. It's Saturday night, and I'm telling you, these parties are gonna go well into the night, and I hope you have a fantastic time when you go. Now, here are some fun things that are going on around the kids track right now. We have Geek Girls Run for Fun. This is outside the Marriott at 8 a.m. tomorrow. We have a character encounter, which if you haven't seen, we actually produced a segment for the character encounter last year. And I got to talk to some really awesome kids, parents, and I got to see the whole thing. It's so cool. Go check out that character encounter tomorrow at the Hyatt Regency. And it's, of course, at 10 a.m. And we have a family-friendly dance. Family-friendly, all ages are welcome, tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. at the Hyatt International. Since we're talking about the kids' track, we actually have a guest to talk about it in some more detail with us. So I want to go ahead and welcome Jonathan. Hi. Hello, Jonathan. How it's are good you doing? to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> see, I've seen him three times in the last couple of days. It's fantastic. <laughs> so Jonathan and I are going to talk a little bit about what the kids' track has to offer. We highlighted a few events. Yeah. But what do you do with the kids' track? What is your role here at DragonCon? So I'm a bit of a Swiss Army knife these days. Uh, but for the kids' track, um, mainly what I do is help with the character encounter. And with the, to help set up the kids dance um, and just make sure that the, all the, the shows and trains run on time. And I know last year we talked a lot about the character encounter together. Yep. But can you tell me about the kids dance? Can you tell me what is that new this year? Is this something we've it's we've not, seen before? It, it's uh, it's been going on for um, at least three years, I think four. And it's a uh, it's a place for any Dragon Con kid to get the wiggles out. That's um, great. We have a DJ. Uh, usually there's. Um, uh, uh, lights, light up balloons last year, I'm sure they'll have something like that again. And uh, usually we have some of the really incredible cosplayers who come to the character encounters show up to the dance to dance with the kids as well. So they kind of get a little through line. They can see them in different ways. Yep. That is so cool. Um, Jonathan, do you anticipate crowds being bigger this year than they have been in years past? And every, if so, why? Every single year the crowds for the character encounter, especially and for the dance, uh, they get bigger every year. Every year we get bigger rooms because there's more demand. We have more That's Dragon great. Con parents show up with their Dragon Con kids. So I hope everyone who's watching and listening knows that 
if you want to go to these events, be on time, maybe a few minutes early. You've got a lot of fun stuff to go do. And this isn't all just for kids, even though it might be the kids' track. I've had a lot of fun going to some of the kids' events, just me, and I'm a big kid at heart. So this is for all the parents, the kids, the big kids at heart like me, and Jonathan, I'm hoping. Yep, and yeah. I hope you take a, a moment to go check out the, uh, the kids' track in general, today, tomorrow, and even a little bit on Monday morning. So right. Jonathan, thank you so much. We really had a great time. And I hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this year, Dragon Con TV actually followed the Borderlands group in the parade. So we have a segment that we actually want to show you. There, are, We are also going to talk about some cosplayers uh, who have costumes that have been inspired by or are actually featured in some of the popular Border, Borderlands series of games. So well, let's get the cosplayers out real quick before we talk about the segment. And then I think you're going to have some fun because the segment's really cool. Now, Borderlands is a worldwide game. It is fantastic, it is awesome. And I think that, you know, it's telling that at Dragon Con we have such a following for this among other games. And there's a lot for Dragon Con to offer. I also recommend that you take a look at your Daily Dragon. Any schedule changes, anything. Every day we publish one of those and we have them available. And it tells you and me, because I'm always looking to see what cool events we have coming up next. Now, let's go ahead and talk to our uh, cosplayers here real quick. We've got two or one fantastic person to start. Yeah. Hey there, welcome. Hi, I'm what's Will. Up? You're Will? Will. I'm Ryan, nice to meet Ryan, you. Ryan, nice to meet you. So we've got uh, Ryan, is it Mazer? Yeah, mm -hmm. Ryan, what do you do? What is, what is your role? Are you did you just are you just a volunteer this year or are you just a, a normal Dragon I'm, Con I'm goer? I'm just your average Dragon Con con goer this year. This is my second year actually. So where did you buy all these cool pieces? Like, I mean, this is amazing. This is oh, very thank professional. You so much. This is actually, I like to make a lot of my stuff, but this is actually like my most thrifted costume that I have made yet. Wait, you made all this? Oh, no, I didn't make it. I usually make my stuff, but this one, I, I pieced things together. I made the shoulder piece. Oh, my goodness. And some of the, the pieces down that you cannot see. Um, but most of this is actually just thrifted and repurposed stuff. So, but um, you still had to find the stuff to repurpose I did. and put into. Yeah, I did, I did. And then it was it was about two weeks of crying and painting. That uh, is straight, cool. So, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So, who are you dressed up as? Are you so, any particular character? I am Moe's the Gunner from Borderlands 3. Tell us about Moe's. So, uh, what do I know about <laughs> Moe's? Um, well, the game hasn't come out yet, so I just know that she is from the Vladoff Army. Uh, which is an army in Borderlands 3. She's uh, a gunner. She's got a giant mech called Iron Bear. Wow. He's kind of like her buddy and her like protector, you know, because she's like a mercenary. So what inspired um, you to do to do Moe's? You know, the funny thing is I, I like Moe's. Um, I like the hair. I like like the the bad A, uh, like way she looks. Um, but also one of the characters from Borderlands 2, his name is Gage, the Macromancer, and they look really similar and they're just my type of, my type of girl, like, like punk and cool and like they just look awesome. That's awesome. So, you look awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I just, I really liked her, and I'm really excited to play her for the um, for the game when it comes out. So I just was like, I'll get on a head start and just started my cosplay, and it all came together awesome. really fast. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, Ryan. Let's actually take a look at the segment about Borderlands that we have going on. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> This is Holly from Dragon Con TV. Today we're going to follow Borderlands. and I'm standing here with Lorelai and Claptrap from Borderlands. So these ladies are involved with all the Borderlands stuff here at Dragon Con, and they call it Borderlands at Dragon Con. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys have done so far this year? Uh, so this year we had a big shoot on Friday. We had about 50 or 60 Borderlands cosplayers, and 
and uh, we had a group in the parade. Uh, there were 20 or so of us that marched in the parade, uh, and then we're all really tired after the parade, so we actually have a little tea party after the parade, and then we do a little uh, smaller shoot, so more casual, a little more fun. And I have to say your desserts were on point because I really enjoyed them. I, whoever you're, you guys got uh, to bring stuff. Um, I actually baked the brownies. They were delicious. <laughs> there was like a hint of cherry in them. Yeah, one, the one was red velvet. And then we had um, one of our uh, other members made some cookies. Stuff. Delicious, delicious. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what it's like um, helping her? Uh, it's always a lot of fun with the Borderlands group. It's mainly just helping wrangle everyone because, you know, obviously they've announced the new games coming out in two weeks. So a lot more people showed up this year with costumes again. Can you tell me a little bit about cell shading, which is the um, what makes everything pop so much on your outfit? Yeah, it's um, it's commonly called cell shading. Shading. Some people tell you that it's not technically cell shading. Uh, cartoon shading, some of us call it. Uh, some comic book cosplayers do it as well. So the cell shading is using the um, either the gradient colors or the bolder colors like I have uh, to create a contrast of light and dark. And then especially the really bold black lines. Basically, to you know, we are trying to make ourselves look like we're animated out of the video game. And it works so very well. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the components used to make your costume, like the hair? Uh, yes, the hair is actually made out of two millimeter craft foam and then a mix of four, six, and 10 millimeter craft foam. I made a base cap to fit to my head and then I just kind of built upon that. Um, I use a heat gun, uh, Dremel to sand things down. Um, the shoulders, the other armor is also made of foam. I have some stuff down on my feet that's made of foam. Um, and the rest is um, just clothing components that I salvaged or bought and um, did a little sewing to modify. So is there anything else Borderlands that you're looking forward to that's coming up? After Dragon Con, um, we will be doing more. Um, we actually have a group on Facebook called Children of the Vault, and it is an inclusive cosplay community. Uh, so we'll get to see a lot of people's cosplays from Dragon Con this weekend, and also we have a whole group of people at PAX West, so we'll get to see all their costumes as well. Well, thank you much to the ladies, um, and uh, that's it. Holly from Dragon Con signing off. Well, that was really cool, and I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as we enjoyed watching and making that. It it's really just a cool group to do. And we have a couple more guests for, about Borderlands that we want to talk to with some very special news. So hello and welcome. Hello. hello. It's good to see you. So who do we have here? Um, I'm 90s teams. My name is Tanisha Drummond. Oh my God. <laughs> it's all good. I'm having a moment. Um, but yes, my name is Tanisha. I think your moment's excusable, so it's completely understandable. Thank you, Tanisha. And who do we have next to you? I'm Jacob Jennings. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, Jacob. Now, I hear you all are really big Borderlands fans. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, how big of a Borderlands fan are you for the Borderlands? Ah, uh, I would say almost borderline obsessive. I heard something happen today that may actually be, you know, a little on that obsessive side, but still a little sweet. Uh, can you tell us what happened today? Right. So uh, we were starting with our photo shoot. We, the question was asked if there were any special shots that wanted to be done. So I said, hey, we have two NPCs here. I had a quest marker above my head for quest complete. And I was like, we need one vault hunter. A vault hunter came up. I believe it was Nisha. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I said, hey, can you go get that box that is hidden in that potted plant over there? Person got it, brought it to us, got down on one knee and proposed. Aww. <laughs> That's about I'm one of the sweetest again. things I've ever heard. <laughs> I, w I wish we had gotten coverage of this. Wait, we did get coverage of this? Excellent. So, what? What? Tell me all about it. So you had a quest marker on your head. Why didn't you? Why don't you have a quest marker on your head now? Because she was my quest, and the quest was completed. Oh, that is super sweet. Like I'm still just like, 
I'm in shock. I'm flabbergasted. I'm all types of words. I'm all types of shapes. I still have the box. Ooh. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna put this box down for like <laughs> the rest of the convention. So, do you have any special jewelry to show off that you want to share with us? Uh, yes, I have the actual ring that is around my neck because that it has is to beautiful. Get, it has my birthstone in it. It's topaz because I'm a November baby. Oh, um, wonderful! And then inside the box, because I have another type of obsession, and that is Skyrim, and he got me. The amulet of Mara, which symbolizes marriage, if a character is wearing it, and they, another character sees it, and it's like, hey, you're interested in marriage? It's like, yeah, and then they get married. So it's like, it's a twofer. That is wonderful. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Tanisha. Jacob, congratulations to you as well. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing that with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate having you. Thank you. Well, one last thing that we want to get in here before we are done for the day is the Friday Night Costume Contest happened last night. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that happened there. <laughs> This is Beth with DragonCon TV, and I'm here at the Friday Night Costuming Contest. I am here with the hosts of the Friday Night Costuming Contest. Can everybody say hi? Hello. Hi. This is a beautiful evening. Everyone put in so much time and energy. We've hosted this now. The boys have helped me out for the last couple of years and um, we're always just totally in awe. Everyone, how much effort goes in, you know. Some of these guys start, go home tonight and start preparing for next year, so it's pretty special. We, are, we get the best view of everyone in the house, I think. I mean, you know, you get a good view out the front, but being right there and standing and seeing it, that's kind of an extra special yeah, element for extra us. extra details you can see when you're right there. It's amazing. I'm here with Lydia. Uh, Lydia, what'd you win tonight? So I won the novice and fan favorite. How many hours did your costume take? I would say roughly 300. Give or take, I lost count after that. <laughs> was there anything especially difficult about your costume? Uh, it was more just tedious rather than um, difficult. I think I learned some new techniques like cold casting all of the florets um, and just like painting probably took ages. Like not, not difficult, but just, yeah, tedious. <laughs> here with Avera Cosplay, and what did you win tonight? Uh, best Journeyman. And how many hours did this costume take? Um, all in, it was probably about 250 hours of work. So I casted all the gems and then the, the, the top of the um, staff, and the first iterations looked like dried gum. So yeah, there were definitely some challenges. Um, first time using an airbrush machine, and the first time I used it, it wasn't pretty either. So it was definitely some trials and errors. Is there anything in particular that you'd like everyone to take notice of? Sure. Oh, uh, the wingspan, yeah. All right, I am here with Kat, and what did you win tonight? I won best prop. And how long did it take you to make the prop? In time hours, I started the 3D printing modeling the day I got home after Dragon Con last year. In man hours, it probably took me, let's call it a, over 200 hours. So that's a well-deserved prop award. It's been around for a minute. Just a little while, just a little while. I am here with Sam, and as you can see, she's got a pretty incredible costume. So how many hours did this take? I stopped counting at 500. All right, so what would you say was the most complicated piece? This is my first beading project. So I did a lot of hand beading. I think I had like 200 hours in beading alone but the hair was probably one of the hardest parts to do. It is a lot of hair. How many wigs does it take to make that? It's probably two. I bought a bunch of packs of wefts to put into it, so it's pretty heavy just from the hair alone. And what did you win tonight? I won Best Professional. All right, I am here with Purple Mako Cosplay and this absolutely terrifying head that we have. Uh, what can you tell me about your costume? 
so I am Scrap Baby from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, the sixth game in the Five Nights at Freddy series. Um, the costume basically consists of six different kinds of foam, uh, conduit, some wood, PVC pipe, fabric, and some other random stuff. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so what did you win tonight? So apparently I won best in show, <laughs> which is, I'm still processing that. I've entered in four other competitions and have won like a, my division or award or nothing at all. So this is a huge step up from what I'm used to. I am a huge nerd for uh, exaggeration. So the claw in Canon is only like about half the size of the one I made. I made mine about three feet long. Her pigtails are about half the size of this. I made them extra long. Um, I put some moving components in, my little fan on my stomach for fun. Uh, my claw moves, everything glows. It's just like my skates. I, I, I have more legitimate roller skates. I want to put as much movement and livability into this thing to make it as realistic and almost, in a weird way, organic as possible. However weird I may be saying for a robot. <laughs> this is Beth, and I'm leaving you from the Friday Night Costuming Contest. Well, we hope you enjoyed that, enjoyed that look at the Friday Night Costuming Contest. We really had a great time with you tonight. Go ahead and check out some of the great parties that are happening around Dragon Con. We've got the Ten Forward Party tonight, the North Remembers Party, of course, the Heroes and Villains Ball, and the last party on Alderaan, just to name four. And there's a lot more. And of course, if you want, you can check out the concert tonight with Gigi Edgley from Farscape fame and her brother, Jake. They actually tour the country, and this is the last stop on their tour for 20 2019. So go ahead and check them out tonight at 10 p.m. in the Hyatt in room 6-7. We thank you for joining us tonight. My name's Will. See you tomorrow.